It's uh, 2.5 million, George. What? You've got $2 million and all I've got to do is come up with the last 500,000? I can't believe it, George. Well, I, uh, can I? Well, yeah, of course, watch me. Right, right, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah, goodbye. George says that all I have to do Honey, is get Honey, this is for the Court of Appeals. We're winners, Evans. We're winners. Calm down. <laughs> what got into <laughs> you? I can't believe it. My movie, after all of these years, is finally going to happen. Oh, let's hope so. Yeah. Oh, no, where's the deposition from the security Honey, guard? I had... Oh, here it is. It's all wrinkled. Oh, well, it's all right. I've got another one. Honey, George, George. Honey, what's going on with your movie? George says... That he can get almost all of the money. Huh? That huh? sounds great. <laughs> oh, it's great. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Why don't we put the law on hold for a while? Huh? Please, don't you see what I'm trying to do? Don't you see what I'm trying to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Judge counselor, you'd win every case. Nick, mm. I'm going to be in Sacramento for the next two days. <laughs> Nobody in the firm ever thought I'd even get this far. I did. I always did. Mm. Unless I can concentrate, yeah. we won't both be winners because I'll lose. That's Andrea. Tell her that I don't want to hear one note of Springsteen tonight. Is she saying goodnight to the quarterback? Mm -hmm. She's saying it the way we used to. And tomorrow she's off to start college. I'll miss her. I may be new, Nick, but I don't play games. It's terrific. What a pleasure to be working with a real pro. You know, I don't mean to... I appreciate that. I don't mean to sound unappreciative or even modest, but that was pretty routine stuff, Morgan. You know, next time... I... No, 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 wait. Next time, I'd like to get down I'm into the sorry. canyon to see... The helicopter was great. Stay up high, Nick. I think, I think if you could just see Forget what I... Forget it. Just keep doing what you know. I was at ringside when he knocked out the dragon lady. Hey, she loved it. 
That's what worries me. She doesn't want it better. She wants it Friday. All you know, right, I wish just listen. So we could listen. I have some people coming over Sunday night. If uh, you and Sharon want to drop by. Uh, no, we can't. Sharon's got to be upstate Sunday. She's arguing a case in front of the Superior Court Monday morning. So, I'll so come on. I'll uh, keep an eye on you. Make sure you don't get into any trouble. I bet you will. Huh? I'm the very soul of this question. Yeah. Hi, Daddy. Hi, I thought you weren't leaving till three. Uh, they changed freshman orientation. Oh, no. How's it going, Miss Yellow? Yeah, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Let me give you a hand there. Oh, Nick. The lock of my briefcase is stuck, honey. Can you fix my taxi? Be here in just a minute. It's cold. Oh, I don't... Are you sure you took your bag with the sweaters? Yes, yes, yes. You know, I could have stayed home to help you. Oh, we've got it. No problem. Oh, I only hope Judge Holtz is not in a rotten mood. I don't think we can get this to fit. Well, we'll ship the rest of it to you later. Oh, no Costs problem. I'll, I'll fit it all in. Thank you. Sweetheart, is my briefcase next to you? Yeah, you see, you just got to oh, great, line honey. up the Thanks numbers like much. on the other I'm side. I'm defrosting right? a roast for you, but in a 350 oven at 4 o'clock, okay? okay. Now, counselor, I need a minute of your okay. time before you go, okay? Uh, in a second, honey. Look. Yeah. Keith. Uh, yes. Uh, don't try to <laughs> I miss you, too. And both of you can wear your seatbelt. Bye, Daddy. Mom, right? I will. I will. I will. Mom. Bye. Bye, honey. I love you, too. You call me the minute you can. Okay, I will. Good luck, Mark. Bye. I love you. I love you, too. Ride carefully now. The first cause of action. Lunch with Dunn and Silverman. I want to talk to you. Call Arthur at recess. I need to talk to Sharon. I get back. Now. Well? I'm going to uh, quit my job at the agency tomorrow. Yeah, so I can finish writing my movie. Quit your job? Uh, and give up all that you've worked so hard for just to make some little movie? Little. Move. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. You know what I mean. I... It's just too much to deal with right now. Help me with my bags, please. I promise you, when I get back, we'll talk about it. Right. If I don't leave right now, I'll miss my plane. I'm sure you understand. Mm -hmm. I have to meet with a client at 2 o'clock in Sacramento. I... That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. I love you. You know, I was making a movie. Evan Brill told me. Oh. Well, it's uh, actually it's not a film. It's a travelogue. It's called State of Pleasure. <laughs> it's not what it sounds like. Your grandmother could see it. So how do you know Evan? Oh, my cousin Sandy. She's the one in the gold lame. Oh, yeah. My name is Nick DeLeon. Marissa Vogel. 
Hi. Hi. So, uh, Evan told you that I was directing a picture. Oh, don't worry. I don't want to part in your film, really. I mean, I don't think I could even recite the Pledge of Allegiance in one take. No, I'm a film student at community college. Really? Uh-huh. That's all theory, you know. I've never actually been on a real set. Mm. Nothing but problems. But you're making a film. Yeah, but... I guess you just have to be there to understand. Where's there? There? Where's the stage? Stage? Oh, it's Lakewood Canyon. Mm. Hey, Nick, there's somebody I want you to meet. Would you excuse me? Marissa, right? Yeah. Uh, nice talking to you. Yeah. Good luck in film school. Bye. Bye. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Andy. I had fun. me. Where have you been? I went to a party. With who? Sandy. It's one o'clock in the morning. I had no idea where you were. What are you getting so angry about? I'm not angry. I was worried about you. I told you to be home tonight at 10 o'clock. Here you come sneaking in three hours late. Well, I wouldn't have to sneak in if you trusted me. Marissa! I want to talk to you. Sit down. Are you going to read me my rights first? I told you to be home at 10 o'clock tonight. Definite. No interpretations. Marissa, don't you understand? I am the guy they pay to get the ambulance when some wacko beats up a kid and leaves her dead in the street. Don't you what understand? What do you want from me? I am in advanced studies. My room is clean. I do housework. And every once in a while, I come home late and you interrogate me like this. You don't know what kind of world we really live in. I can't let what happened to your mother happen to you. I am not my mother. I am my own person. I'm gonna go get a glass of milk. Wait a minute. What, I can't have a glass of milk? Just wait a minute. I want you to listen to me. Some night you ought to come to work with me, and I can show you what happens to little girls who think that they can take care of themselves. I don't want to hear any of this. You don't understand anything! I am trying to be mother and father to you, and every time I say something, it's like I'm butting into some private little thing of yours. You don't know what happens to other kids! I don't care about other kids. If their parents don't care what happens to that's them, the that's point. their problem! You never let anything happen oh, to Oh, I'm interested in no, what happens you to you. Don't. I'm interested that you, you come home when you're supposed to come home. Do you realize that I called dispatch ten minutes ago to try to find out where the hell you were? Do you understand that? I want you home when you're supposed to... Okay, some people only understand things the hard way. So here it is, in black and white. If this ever happens again, you stay in during the week. No more going out. Saturday nights, you're in at 11 o'clock. You're going to obey me. You're still under my roof. And under my rule, you are going to obey me. And you're going to grow up. I don't want to use this rental house again, okay? I don't even want to look at it. When it's done, bring it up to location. I'll be lining up this afternoon shot. I want maximum height with a shot of the fully extended, okay? And tell Gil to get the chancing in a north-south position. And I went over again, as I discussed with DPA, the total flexibility over the edge of the train. Can you line it up for me? After lunch, we're going to start the shot, right? And, um, and don't forget the two cops for the, for the watches, all right? Good. Get the right out. I'll meet you after. Hi, Nick. Hi. What are you doing here? Just passing through. Nice. Just happened to be in the neighborhood, right? <laughs> well, you said I'd have to be here to understand, so here I am. Huh. I mean, that was sort of an invitation, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so you want to see what it's like in the trenches? Okay, things are a little confused, but want to tag along? Yeah, come on. Okay. Lee? 
line, I've shot 21 next, okay? You guys ready? Thanks. Go? Yeah. Okay, we're all waiting, sir. Good. Ready? <laughs> okay. Let's take off. <laughs> 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 Open your eyes. Come on. If I remember uh -huh. right, the lens height is 27 feet from the ground. Don't look down. Don't look down. Ah, you look down. Oh, and 7,000 feet from the valley. The only way to move a camera in my class is to hand hold it and sit in a wheelchair. Oh, it's beautiful. I feel like a bird. Look in the lens. Go ahead. Great. It's beautiful. You like chili? Chili? Yeah, you know, the real hot kind. How hot is hot? Not for yourself. We're having a beer and chili wrap party tonight afterwards. And uh, if you want to uh, hang around, you're invited. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Keep dry though, right? Okay. Gil? All right, keep your eye. Look at it. Look okay. at it. Ready? Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> right there, right there. Right there. Good. Right? Right. Yeah. Hello. Before you say anything. Listen, where are you? Where, when are you going to get home? Oh, Dad, we didn't find out till this morning, but my class is at a film location. And Sandy's here, and I got to go on this huge crane, and it was so scary. And uh, they just told us that we're not going to be able to get a bus home till 10, so it looks like we're going to have to stay here and have dinner at a coffee shop. Well, what is this movie? Where, where are you? Lakewood Canyon. It's just a couple of hours from... Yeah, I know where it is. The last bus is at 10, right? Let me talk to whoever's running that show. Oh, Daddy, please don't make a big deal out of it. I'm having so much fun. Marissa, I want to talk to somebody. Please, Daddy, please. This is what I love. All right, listen to me. I'm going to call you later from work. And you had better be home. Do you understand? I do. All right, I'll see you later. OK, goodbye. Goodbye. Sandy? Listen, you're going to have to cover for me. Okay, great. Okay, bye. <laughs> well, it's all set. I can stay a while. Hi, it's great. Uh, waiter? Another one, please. You want to drink? Just a beer. Nice to see some ID. Well, this is my favorite song. You want to dance? Okay. Try it again. Sure. Leaving nothing but this is my second old hard lot of day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's time to start erasing <laughs> the go. we've been chasing in our mind. We know there's no will. Oh, 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 oh. Other ties on a sunrise. <laughs>
plant we did. Anyway, I'll take the couch. I know it's old-fashioned, but... Uh... That's good. Don't worry about it. Old-fashioned's coming in. Okay. Let me get a blanket and a pillow from the other room. Good night, Nick.
there's going to be a little action here tonight. We better go do it before they make us. Right, Al? Hookers, hookers. God, I am so sick of hookers. I come off a shift and I look at the lady in the supermarket like she's selling it too. They've been sitting on my transfer request for six months now. And I bet you I'm still working vice when they give it a go watch. Jen has been working well, bro, Frank. She thinks I would be around more. Danny. Danny's getting into trouble in school. Well, you know, when, uh, until they're 10 or 12 years old, it's not too hard. But then they become teenagers, and that's when it really starts. Aye. Whiskey, too. Don't tell me you got problems with yours, too. Oh, no, Marissa's a good kid. She's got a lot of common sense. Doesn't mean I don't worry about her. See, with a girl, it's different. I mean, she hasn't had her mother around in a long time. That's been very hard. And then there's certain oh, things you just what can't help. Oh, oh, this is gonna make your day. You're gonna collar a couple more hookers. Let's go. What? Save it, sweetheart. I usually get paid for this. They made me a sexual offer and named the price. The dude runs the place. The young one could be a juvie, no ID. Okay, hold on to him for a while. I want to talk to her. Come here. Where are you from? Hollywood. Can't you tell? How'd you get into the business? Oh, just lucky, I guess. Listen, I know all the answers, honey, and I'm gonna try to talk to you straight. You're gonna book me or what? I'm trying to make a deal with you. Got 50 bucks, we can make a deal. You don't listen good, do you? Okay, final offer. I cut you loose. There's no paperwork and no record. You let me call your folks and I put you on a bus tonight. What do you say? It's all yours. Hello? Sandy, this is Uncle Mike. I just called home and there's no answer. Now, where is she? Sorry. I should have called when we got back. She's here, Uncle Mike. Let me talk to her. She's taking a shower. Hey, it's OK. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. I'll tell her you called, okay? Yeah, okay. It's just great. Look, I don't think this is going to work out. Shh, 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 please, please, listen to me, all right? Please listen. I'm married. I've been married for 18 years. But for the last couple of years, I don't know, I, I think it's over. Anyway, that's beside the point. What happened last night has nothing to do with that relationship or anything else besides you and me. It, it, it was beautiful last night. 
I felt alive for the first time in a long time. Hi. Hi. Did you have a good time? Great. Sandy tell you that I called? Huh? Yeah, she she told me um on the way to school this morning. You know, Marissa, I'm very proud of you. And there isn't a man in my precinct who doesn't think you're fantastic. That's why it hurts me so much when you lie. You didn't go to school today. I checked. No, no, I stayed at the film location. Because I, I missed the last bus. Where did you sleep? At a motel. With the, um, with the other film crew. How did you afford a motel? That's forty, forty-five dollars at least. Well, I stayed with a couple of women. There was a wardrobe lady and a and a and a and a and a, and a, and a makeup lady, and and they just gave me a sleeping bag. No one else. What do you mean? I mean like guys. There were guys, all right. There were guys in every corner of the room, and they were just lined up waiting for me, okay? Just a minute. Don't you talk to me that way. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? Dispatch. This is 104. I need a warrant check on DeLeon, Nick S. Roger, 104. I need that now, dispatch. Roger. DeLeon, Nick S. 93 Arendelle Road. No arrests, no warrants. How old is he? 41, sir. Divorced? Married. Out. Ten, I'd rate your enthusiasm as it too. What are you doing? I'm just getting some books together here. Didn't, didn't we have a, a dictionary, a small pocket size with a plastic cover? What? Oh, Andrew took it to school. Ah, that's it. Why? Well, 
I have decided to take the time off and to finish writing my film. I've, uh, I've rented a place at the beach. You've rented a place at the beach? Yeah, it's quieter there. No, there's no distractions. Either. As opposed to this madhouse? It'll just go better if I'm alone. Alone? Don't you want to talk? Now you want to talk. This isn't because of what I said about your film, is it? Believe me, it's not just that. I've been trying to talk to you for a long time, but you've been too busy. Oh, that's right. You blame me as usual. Come on, let's not have a war over this, all right? Oh, no, you just want to go off and do your thing without a word. And to hell with your responsibilities. I know what it is. I know what it is. You don't want to talk because you're afraid the truth might come out. Huh? You're afraid of... There's someone else, isn't there? Answer me! I'm not sure. student here. Her name is Marissa Vogel. Uh, I have a book that belongs to her. Vogel? Yeah, that's right. I don't think we have a Vogel. Is it with a V? Yes, Marissa Vogel. She's a film student here. Not in this department. Are you looking for Marissa? Yeah, Marissa Vogel. Uh, she's across the hall, editing room. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much. She's out there, never even heard of you. Well, she's new. She doesn't know everybody. Oh, well, she checked that computer readout of hers, and you weren't on the list of film students, so I... Uh, well, you don't have to be a film student to take a film class. I mean, uh, uh, oh, I, can I uh, help you? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Mr. Just... Raphael, this is Nick DeLeon. He's the director. It's a real pleasure, Mr. Leon. <laughs> well, pleasure's mine. And really, I just do industrial films. Well, just. You being modest, you earn your living at it. Uh, I don't suppose I could twist your arm to show some of your work to my students. Uh, sure, I, yeah, I'd love to do that. Really appreciate it. Thank All you. right, kill the lights, roll the tape. You're welcome to stay and watch. Yeah, uh... What is this, Vasis 70? I slept with my wife last night. Well, I want to talk to you about it. I got some shopping to do. Would you tag along? I need some expert advice on it. When they're going, it's tough. Tough, 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 shot. Excuse me, Mr. DeLeon. I'm Detective Volker. Yes? I'm interested in locating your husband. 
something wrong? No, nothing like that. I just need a little information. It seems that he witnessed something in Lakewood Canyon. Witnessed what? I'm not at liberty to say. Well, I'm an attorney. Mm -hmm. Well, this is very important, and I could get a subpoena. Well, I don't know where it is, but I, I, I do have the number. Um, it's 555. One second, please. 555. 8520. 8520. Thank you very much. Yes. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if we can get all these taxes in in one. Okay, Love. let's okay. do that. Ready? Yeah. Arms out. Okay. One. You know, I think we really work well together. <laughs> nice house. We had a long. Uh, no, actually, I'm just running it. Well, oh, it must be really nice to work here. Yeah. Well, you know, when my movie deal finally comes through, I get all the money. I'm gonna spend most of my time out here. How exciting! Yeah. So maybe you need an assistant. Well, maybe. Maybe. Do you have any credentials? Oh, 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 oh. You just put it down. buy your daughter so many presents? Well, she needs lots of clothes for school, you know. She's very lucky. Let's see. Turn around. You like it? Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. She's going to love it. It's yours. Thank you. <laughs> You're going to show me the rest of the house.
dressed. What's the matter? Just get dressed, quick. Nineteen-year-olds, you'd never pick her up. She gave her consent. Come on, Arthur. Yeah. Okay. Well, cop or not, outrage, father or not, we could charge assault. No, it's got nothing to do with this. What I need to know is what's the worst he can do with the statutory rape charge. But the DA is going to tell him to forget it. But if he doesn't, it could be a few years. Don't okay. worry, I'll be there for you. I hope my law partner understands. Has, uh, has Sharon said anything? No. Not a word. What is it? Detective Vogel is still waiting, sir. How long has he been waiting now? Twenty-five minutes. Did you tell him I'm buried? I did. All right, I'll see him. Mike! Hey! It's been a while. You look terrific. What, have you been working out or what? Very little. Listen, I'm sorry I had to keep you waiting. As you can see, I am up to my ears. Have a seat. Yeah, right. You're busy. Well, I'll get right to the point. It's about my daughter. Yeah, I, I spoke to Lou Gavin. He filled me in. Mike, I'm really sorry about what happened to her. Yeah, well, that's what I got from him, but I don't think he understands, so that's why I'm here. Mike, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to back Lou on this one. It's a tough nut. Real tough. In other words, I'm supposed to pretend that nothing ever happened. Look, I know it's a lousy thing to say, but if I were in your shoes, I would do exactly that. No way. Look, Mike, do you have any idea what we'd be up against in there? There's no way I could keep her off the stand. No way. And DeLeon can afford one rough defense. His guy will go after her like a shark and do everything he can to prove that she misrepresented her age. I mean, everything. Do you really want to put your daughter through that? I want to put him away. That's what I want to do. No force was used. No coercion. She went to the guy's house. It's a victimless crime, Mike. Like hell. Mike, he did not pick her up in the schoolyard with a bag of candy. I sympathize with you. I'm on your side, really. That is why I am advising you to forget it. I figured this. I'm ready for you. There's 150 names here, every man in my precinct. That's 150. By the end of the week, I'll have every precinct in this city. That's thousands and thousands of officers and their families. You're running for mayor. I say good luck. I say that all these officers and their families are not going to forget. And that doesn't count their friends. Yeah, I understand. And I told you that crane shot was going to be just super. When are you going to have your cut ready? Because I want to see it. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not too happy with the no cut right now. No way to now, shoot no. anything, Nick. There's just so much in the budget. Yeah, but... You'll get back to me this afternoon on that. Nick DeLeon, a warrant for your arrest. What's going on here? You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. 
You have the right to speak with an attorney and to have the attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. Do you understand these rights as we've explained them to you? No, I don't want to nod. I want a verbal response, so I repeat. Do you understand these I rights? I understand. Do you wish to give up the right to remain silent? No. Do you wish to give up the right to talk to an attorney and have him present during questioning? No, I don't. I'm calling the shots now, and you're finished. Wait right here. Number 20 to pick up his property. I'll drive you to your car. Look, you didn't have to come. I thought Arthur, Arthur... had his son's school play tonight. Oh. The arraignment will be day after tomorrow. Arthur will be there to plead you. Right. Have you thought about how you're going to plead? Look, I know what I did. I'm not. I know what you did too. I understand that she looks eighteen. I'm speaking as an attorney. Until the trial, you're not to see her, ever, under any circumstances. You are to meet with Arthur and tell him everything. As far as I'm... As far as I'm concerned, I don't want to hear any of it. Sharon, I'm sorry. Since you've already rented the place at the beach. I'm going to stay there. Don't worry. I'm staying at the beach. I'll go up and see Andrea tomorrow. Why? Um, I'd rather she hear it from me than to hear it from someone else. for school. If you don't go to school, how are you going to stay in advanced studies? You won't end up like your old man, do you? I mean, I don't even understand half what's in these books I bought you. This encyclopedia, I can't even spell it. <laughs> You're going to be all right, Morris. I'm going to see to that. I got transferred from nights. No more crummy nights, just days. So when you come home from school, I'll be there. Nighttime, we'll be together. I'm not your wife. I am your daughter. That's the way it's going to be.
lots of movies, makes movies. Might be something there. What are you getting at? Let's say she lives a fantasy life. Forget it. Nick, I'm just testing the waters. Yeah, but this is ridiculous. You direct films, I practice law. Don't tell me what's ridiculous. Now, no, what no, now? Arthur, I'm not going to have anything to do with you trying to make her look mentally unstable, please. Okay, we dropped the fantasy. Thank you. You say she told you she wasn't a virgin. What does that have to do with this? Well, legally, nothing. Evidence of a complainant's past sexual conduct is not admissible unless she bragged about it and was untrue. That could be admissible as part of a pattern of lying. No, she didn't brag about her sexual experiences. We didn't even talk about sex. Nick, you got to give me something to work with here. Arthur, can't you win this case without crucifying her? I don't know what I'm going to have to do. And besides, what the hell do you think she's trying to do to you? It's not her. It's her father. Oh, what difference does it make who it is, for God's sake? Nick, you're going on trial for statutory rape, and I'm trying to keep you out of jail. Let's track the events one more time. Yeah. You met at Evan Brill's party. Did she say anything or do anything else that might have given you the impression that she was over 18? Anything you haven't told me about? Uh, she said that um, she said that she was taking a college course, but that was true. Was there any discussion of her age, even indirectly? No, 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 no. Well, what else did you talk about at the party? about making films, and I said that uh, you had to be there to understand about it, and she took that as an invitation to come to the location the next day. What happened at the location? I let her watch for a while. She came to the rap party. We danced a little bit. She missed her last bus home, and then we went back to my room. <sighs> the party the location, and afterwards, and you never once thought to ask her about her age. No, it's... damn it, Arthur. It just happened. We were attracted to each other. I didn't plan this. She didn't plan it. Are you in love with her? doing here? Just passing through. Just happened to be in the neighborhood, right? Well, something like that. How'd you guess? Oh, Marissa. I just wanted to tell you that I'm free. What does that mean? It means I, I'm free. It means I ran away from home. I'm go call your father. He's not home. Well, I'll find that out for myself. No, no, no. I mean, it all meant nothing to you. All I want to do is talk to you, and you run the phone. Thanks a lot. Marissa! Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll listen, I'll listen, but not in the house. Marissa! Let's talk. Marissa! Home! Where are you, babe? father had some friends over. There were some other policemen, and I was supposed to be asleep, but I wasn't. I heard them talking, and they were talking about my mother. Yeah? Yeah. And this is the first time that I realized she didn't just go away. My father went to work. She would sneak out to bars and stuff. You know? And I remember when she'd come home, and they'd argue about it. And after they were talking about that night, that she had gone into, got into a creep's car at the bar, and, and, and it just drove off. And then a couple of days later, they found her murdered. Uh, Marissa. 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 Marissa.
Alice, I'm sorry. I know, but you see, he tells me that all the time. He tells me that I'm going to end up like her, that if I look at another guy, I'm going to end up like he's her. He's just trying to protect you. I mean, I'm not saying he's doing it the right way. He's doing it absolutely wrong. But if it happened to me, I don't know. I'd, I'd feel the same way about my daughter. I know, but I'm scared of him. I know you are, but running away isn't the answer, Marissa. Come on, i got to get you home. Let's go call a cab. After what I just told you, you're going to send me back there? He's your legal guardian until you're 18. So what am I now, a thing? Huh? Am I a 16-year-old thing? There's nothing I can do about this, Marissa, even if I wanted to. I know, but you see, the thing is, you were the best thing that ever happened to me, really, where it was so exciting with us. I mean, for just a few moments, I felt that I, I just forgot about the horror stories that he told me. We have to take responsibilities here, okay? I have to go call your father. No! See, I have it all figured out. What are you going to do is, are you going to be good? Are you going to do what you say? Are you going to do what he says, too? See, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to be home every night. And then I'll be Daddy's good little girl, and that way there will be no more problems. Let's let go. Okay. No, but see, if we could just spend some time during the day, maybe just an hour or something, maybe just an hour. I mean, just for an hour, because no. I feel like if we could be just as close, just for a little while, then I could put up with him. Please, calm down. No. But pull yourself together. Come on. No. I love you. No, don't do this to me, Marissa. Don't you love me, too? Oh, oh, please. You have to love me. Please. Please. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm Mrs. DeLeon. What do you want? I suppose I simply wanted to see you before the trial. There's still going to be a trial? I mean, even after he saved me? Forgiveness doesn't come so easy in the real world. I suppose that means you don't forgive me. Should I? I didn't try to take him away. Oh, just a roll in the hay. Ah, oh, what the hell? He's only got a wife, a family, a reputation. Do you love him? One helps people one loves. Didn't you ever discuss the difference in your ages? The only thing that he ever told me was that with me, he felt young. I see. I went there to watch him shoot a film. He asked me to a rap party. I called my father on the phone. I told him I was going to be late. We went in, we had some food and a couple of drinks. Oh. And it just happened. People versus Perkins, 1982. Defendant's putting his arm around 13-year-old was part of his preparation for unlawful sexual intercourse upon her. Therefore, he could not be convicted both of lewd conduct with a minor and... One of these days, I'm going to learn 
Not to carve like a tiller, the hun. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, honey, would you like some sweet potatoes? Just for you. Cinnamon? I'm on a diet. Oh, well, diets don't count at Thanksgiving. I don't want any, okay? Sure. Yeah, you want some? Is that enough for you? So, have you, uh, have you gotten any snow up there yet? Thanks. Um, it got real cold, um, last. This is ridiculous. What's ridiculous? Pretending like we're one big happy family. And you two aren't even living together. And he's on trial for statutory rape. We're sitting here acting like we're the Brady Bunch. Sweetheart, we're just trying to make the best of a very difficult situation. Well, I can't do it. I'm not hungry anymore. idea what it's like for me up there. Kids look at me like I'm some sort of freak or something. And what does your dad do? Oh, he messes with 16-year-old girls. Andrea, stop it. No, I won't stop it. Andrea, I need your support. Oh, yeah? You didn't need my support in Lakewood Canyon, did you? I'm going to Judy. Andrea, please. Don't touch me! Are you in high school? Yes. How old are you, Marissa? 17. And when you first met Mr. DeLeon and went to visit him in Lakewood Canyon, how old were you then? 16. Okay, I want you to listen very carefully to my next question. At any time before having sex with Mr. DeLeon, did you ever tell him that you were 18 or older? No. You never lied to him, did you, Marissa? Your Honor, asked and answered. Sustained, Mr. Berman. I'm finished, Your Honor. Thank you, Marissa. Feeling all right, Ms. Vogel? Yes, sir. I'm glad. You would have drowned if it hadn't been for Mr. DeLeon. Your Honor. Come on, Mr. Bear. You haven't got a jury to impress, and I'm not going to go for that. My apologies, Your Honor. All right, when you called your father from Lakewood Canyon, what did you tell him? I told him that I had missed the last bus and that uh, I was, we were staying for dinner. We? I said I was with my film class. But in fact, you weren't. In fact, you lied. Kind of. Miss Vogel, you said you were with your class and you weren't. Is that what you call a kind of lie? No. It was a lie, but I didn't want my father to get mad. Mad? Why should he have been mad? Because. Because. Because you've gone off on these forbidden adventures before. You've lied to him before. Objection. Counsel is not only putting words in the witness's mouth, but past actions are inadmissible. I am merely trying to establish a come pattern Come on, of... gentlemen, come on, gentlemen. I'll sustain that. Let me rephrase this. In order to have any freedom at all, to have breathing space, you have to lie? Your Honor, that is exactly the I same... I know, Mr. Berman. Mr. Bear, cut that out. You'll stop this line of questioning. My apologies, Your Honor. I withdraw the question. Now, after you called your father, did you join Nick DeLeon at the bar? Yes. You drink alcohol? I have. Hardly ever. When you do, is it whiskey, wine? Beer, mostly. And when you were in the bar that night, did you have a drink? Yes. Beer. Beer? Although you were underage, you were served alcohol. How is that possible? Didn't the waiter ask for identification? Is 
Miss Vogel, the waiter is sitting outside this courtroom. I showed the driver's license. I can't hear you, Miss Vogel. I showed him a driver's license. Was it your license? No. It was my cousin Sandy. She's 21. I see. And how did you happen to have her license? She loaned it to me. For this particular occasion? No. Then this was not the first time. Yes. I mean, no. You have used her license before. Yes. Why does she lend it to you? So that you can order drinks? Well, lots of Let's kids. Let's not talk about lots of kids, Miss Vogel. We're talking about you. That license was a lie. After you lied to your father, you lied to the waiter. In the presence of Nick DeLeon, you produced false evidence that you were at least 21 years old. In fact, you've lied to us here today. No. You lied. You said you went to watch Nick DeLeon make a movie. That's a lie. You went to push yourself as close to him as you could so that he could do something Your for Honor, you. Your Honor, he's bullying the witness. May I remind counsel that he's dealing with a child? Not by her actions. Ease up, Mr. Bear. Oh, it's an old, old story, Ms. Vogel. Anything to get into the movies. Drink with him, kiss him, go to bed with him. No! No, that is not what happened. I, I want to talk to you. What are you doing? What is going on here? Your Honor, I'd just like to talk to my lawyer. I don't know, Your Honor, if I might have a moment. You know, I think you're really just gone too far. You promised me you Mr. De Leon. Your Honor. Mr. De Leon, your lawyer will make the arguments. Yeah, but uh, this just isn't right. This I is will determine terrible. what's right in this courtroom. I am here to receive evidence and make rulings. Your lawyer will present the arguments. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, De Leon, you will sit down or I'll find you in contempt. Can you, Mr. Bear? No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Because of the hour, this court will adjourn until 10 a.m. Monday. I know I was rough, but you've got a great deal at stake, and Monday morning, Berman's going to come at you just as hard. Nice work nailing her with that phony driver's license. I'm going to go see what's happening with our Quigley motion. Remember, reasonable belief. The way she looked and the way she acted gave you a reasonable right. belief she was 18. That's our only possible defense. Thanks. I'll see you both on Monday. Okay, thanks. Right. Goodbye, Nick. You know, I appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Don't mention it. Aren't we ever going to talk about this thing? I don't know. Fact, I had an affair. Fact, she turned out to be a minor. Now she's a minor. I didn't know that then. And what if she hadn't been? What if she was 18? What would you be doing now? You're twisting this thing all out of shape. I'm trying to explain something. You're the one that brought it up. If you Answer just the question. stop acting like a lawyer for a minute, I will. Look, she's just a kid. But she, she did a hell of a job playing make-believe grown-up. She... Oh, and that explains it. Well, I... I've been hurt, too. And who jumped up to protect me? Nobody. I'm sorry. I don't want an apology. Well, what do you want? You don't tell me what you think I want to hear. Just tell me what I need to hear. Well, what is that? Huh? What? That's up to you. I'll see you Monday. How about I make some of my special scrambled eggs, huh? You gotta eat something, honey. Uh, I'll send out for the, that favorite piece of yours, okay? Listen to me. I had no idea he was gonna be that rough on you.
relax. I didn't come to see Marissa. I came to talk to you. And you think that's a smart idea? Yeah, I do. You want to hit me again? Go ahead. Take your best shot. But I think you're going to want to hear what I've got to say. What? That's your sorry? Yeah. Something else. Don't con me. What's the something else? Whether or not you've lost your daughter. Hey, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about her feelings. I don't know one parent who really knows what's going on in their kids. As I know what do your kids' feelings got to do with mine? They're both kids. Things get bottled up in them, hurting them. If they don't let them out, well, I don't have to tell you what happens. You know that day in the pier? She didn't slip. I think she jumped. Why would she jump? Why? Because she's scared of you. She was lucky. She found somebody who listened to her. Somebody who didn't tell her that her secrets were wrong or terrible. Uh, who? Me. You? Yeah. Oh. And what did she tell you? She talked about her mother. You've already lost your wife. But it's not too late to save Marissa. I'll see you in court. Well, we seem to have no problem with the events, Mr. DeLeon. You met this girl at a party, and you admit that your words could have been taken as an invitation to visit the scene of the film you were making. That's correct. And you bought her more than one alcoholic beverage. Yes. And you danced with this girl. Yes, sir. Lost track of the time and missed the last bus. Yes, sir. I have here the motel registry previously admitted to evidence, and it indicates that on that day, there were several rooms available. What are you getting at? Was there some reason why you couldn't have booked two rooms? Well, I suppose they could. You did an awful lot of supposing, Mr. DeLeon. I submit to you that it was willful supposition, that your claim of innocence because of reasonable belief of her age was in fact willful indifference to her age, that you lured her there for the purpose of seducing her. Objection. He's into closing. Sustained. Mr. Berman, you can say all that during your closing argument. Yes, sir. Reasonable belief that this girl was 18 years old. Look at her, Mr. DeLeon. Look at her! I invite the entire courtroom to look at that child and have a reasonable belief that she is 18 years she old. She wasn't dressed like that. She didn't look like that. She didn't look like a child. She looked like a woman. The waiter asked for ID. He seemed to think she was underage, didn't you? No. Because you didn't care if she was underage, did you, Mr. DeLeon? No further questions. Mr. Bear? Nothing, Your Honor. Lieutenant may step down. May it please the court, I'd like a few moments for a conference. The defense now calls as a character witness Detective Michael Vogel. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guide? I do. Be seated. Are you acquainted with defendant Nick DeLeo? Yes, I am. Can you tell us the nature of that acquaintance? Well, if you don't mind, Your Honor, if I could just say something, it'd be okay with you. Well, Detective Ogle, I run a tight ship, but not that tight. Go ahead. No. Um, first, he did it. And nothing is going to change that. But I've been thinking about why all this happened. Your Honor, are we going to have a... Yes, Counselor. We're going to have what we're going to have. I'll let the man speak. What it is, is... I've been telling myself that she slipped off that pier. But the truth of it is, I pushed her. I mean, I might as well have. 
see what I see on the street. Well, that's my world, you know. And I don't sleep so good at night. A long time ago, when Marissa was a baby, her, mo her mother. This is very hard. Uh -huh. It's all right. Take your time. Uh, I would go out, out on duty, and her mother would put the baby to bed. And then she'd go out, just go out, just like that. I was out doing my job, I, doing my job, working, feeding my family. I found out about her. I tried to stop her. I talked to her. I argued with her, but nothing. I couldn't have any effect. One night, she went out. She picked up some guy, the wrong guy, and I wasn't there to stop it. So, uh, I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't happen to my baby. I was going to make sure. Well, what I did was, I put her in jail. I made her just like her mother. You see what I did? I made, I made her stop loving me. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I I'm sorry. Lieutenant and Consul will come forward and face the bench. <clears throat> Consent and reasonable belief are the two issues which confront me at this trial. While it appears that Marissa Vogel consented in this matter, consent is not a defense for unlawful conduct with a minor. I find that you knew or you should have known that she was a minor and that you had a duty to inquire and verify her age. Nick DeLeon, I find you guilty as charged. Say uh, before I pass sentence? No, Your Honor. Now, the law gives me considerable latitude for sentencing in this kind of case. Their warning to up to five years in state penitentiary. Now, we have heard a request for clemency on the part of the victim's father. On the other hand, you are found guilty of the crime. And the state has stringent and unequivocal laws. And I am responsible for enforcing those laws. Nick Leon, I sentence you to three years in prison. And I suspend those three years on the condition that you perform community services be directed by this court, and that during this period you do not violate the law again. Thank you, Leon. Free to go. There will be a short recess before we hear the case of the People versus Axel. All rise. Mike. Um, that was, uh, well, forget it. Marissa. Goodbye. Goodbye.
doing some last minute work on a case? Look, I hope this didn't come out all wrong. Um, you said you didn't want to hear just an apology, that you wanted to hear what you needed to hear, right? Right. Uh, you, you know, when we were first married, I had these great dreams. And as the years went by, I traded most of them for a steady paycheck. But I held on to one. And for the last five years, I've been trying to make it happen. Uh, a movie. Right? Not for any client, but for me. And that night when you were uh, preparing for your uh, court of appeals case, and, uh, well, and, and the next day when I came by and I told you that I was going to quit my job. Yes, I remember it. Then you remember what you said about my little movie? I was really, I was really angry at you. I understand. I mean, I just, I, I, uh, I, I didn't know if I could take any more of that, of that non-communication. And with Andrea gone, I, I mean, I was starting to freak out a little bit about about a squaring off 24 hours a day. The answer wasn't Marissa Polo. It never was. And it never will. 